in the dark, dark tune, there was a dark, dark street. And in the dark, dark street, there was a dark, dark office. In the dark, dark office, there were some dark, dark stairs. And down the dark, dark stairs, there was a dark, dark room. And in the dark, dark room was where the worst wrestling tropes go to die. <laughs> Hello, I'm Ross Twiddell from Cultaholic and welcome to the latest thrilling instalment of Straight to Hell, the show, of course, where my illustrious guest offers a list of their pet peeves from the world of professional wrestling. Then, you know, they just all go down to hell now. So it's the right thing to do, isn't it? Who am I to decide what stays in and what goes out? Joining us today is a man you all know. He's called Tamatonga. It's a good one, this. Hi, Ross, over to you. So we are joined by Tamatonga. Tama, how are you doing today? Very good, thank you. Thank you for having me here, Ross. Yeah, joined by your child, I believe, in the background. Hope he doesn't do a running. Oh, yeah, he's just going to be running around, screaming, yelling, Daddy, throwing stuff, maybe. We, we got uh, El Poco Loco, the movie on, so that might go up. I, I'm not sure yet. Never There's seen just... that one? What's it like? <laughs> what's, what's the movie called? Coco. Oh, yeah, Coco. It's a, it's a, it's a good one. I've seen it about, uh, I think, about 57 times. <laughs> and... And I've got a lot of it uh, memorized except for the title, so. <laughs> <laughs> but one thing I've always wondered about you, what's it like growing up with Haku as your dad? Ah. Uh, I just imagine, like, if you ever got in a bother at school or something, you just go, oh, there's my dad over there. It's just like... Yeah. You, you know, it, it was cool to have a cool dad on TV, um, but we were, like, we were taught to kayfabe that, man. My, my mom, my mom was big on, like, if anybody asked... Who, you, yeah, who your dad is, you tell him he, he's a truck driver. And so really? that's how, yeah, we, you know, because we would always get bothered. Everybody knew who, who our pop was. So, you know, me and my brother was like, no, he's a truck driver. And you're like, why are you lying to us? You know? <laughs> that must be heartbreaking when you're young, like wanting to show off your dad and you can't. <laughs> so I've got to ask as well, what's, what's the latest with Enzo or whatever he's going by these days? <laughs> and, and, and then, oh, shit. So, oh man, <laughs> I, you know, I, he has a little problem with me. Yeah, he thinks I, I blocked him from uh, uh, from coming to New Japan. I, you know, I just, I didn't do that. I might have got hot at the incident that happened to MSG, but that ain't his fault. I think that was Booker's fault. But he took it, he took it some kind of way, and we've been uh, exchanging uh, words on on social media. Uh, and we'll, and we'll uh, see. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, you know me. I like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have some fun with it. I could easily ignore this, you know, and let it just die off. But uh, that's that's too easy. <laughs> that's too easy. <laughs> so is it, gonna, is it is it look like it might be a match? You know what? That there was, you know, the only I, I put it out. The only way I would do it, uh, I would entertain this would be for charity. If we did it, a charity function, and uh, supposedly. Supposedly, I saw on social media there was somebody offering twenty five thousand dollars for our match, and I was I was like, somebody would pay that much money to see Enzo. <laughs> I don't believe that. So you know, and then I then I saw again that he turned it down. So then I, I'm I'm starting to to uh, wonder how legitimate this whole thing was, yeah. <laughs> and uh, you know, and then. I, that that's where we're at. So I think uh, I don't know if anybody re see. That's how bad people don't like him. They don't even want to pay twenty five k or anything say, for charity I, work on his ass. If I had twenty five grand to pay for something like that, I would pay just to see you slap him about a bit. <laughs> <laughs> I would pay myself twenty five grand to see this ass. <laughs> and also, just just this week in the news, there's been sort of reports. I don't know how true they are. It, that uh, Jericho and Moxley from AEW cannot work the big New Japan show. In MSG this weekend, uh, this summer, sorry, not this weekend. I was just wondering your take on the whole sort of where the the New Japan AEW working relationship, where you stand on that. What's your take? Uh I mean, it's business, and it, if it makes sense, I'm I'm all for it. You know, I think I think New Japan has been kind of holding back to see where AEW stance is and what they're all about. Um, and and to me, if it's if business makes sense, then why not? You know, if it makes sense. Um, but, you know, I know how New Japan rolls and and we'll see. We'll see. I, Moxley and, and Jericho have been doing very well for us business wise. And and uh, I think that they are great, uh, great door openers to maybe AEW. We, we will see. 
We'll see. So, Cyrus, I speak on behalf of many people watching this video that, you know, if there was a working relationship there, seeing you in an AEW ring would be quite interesting. Ooh! You know, I'm just throwing it out I would, I would love it. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Pay me the money! <laughs> <laughs> and just before we get going, the final thing. Obviously, the beach party's coming up, WrestleMania week. Uh, just tell us what that's all about and what the latest is, what you've got planned. Uh, well, you know, we'll start off with Wrestle Week. We got, uh, I'm actually, my brother and I are going to be uh, working with uh, Lions Gate, the New Japan Lions Gate show we're going to have up there on uh, January, I mean, on April 2nd, which is Thursday. And then uh, we're gonna do a meet, uh, meet and greet on Friday for for WrestleCon, and then on Saturday, April fourth, April fourth, we're having second number two block party, but this time it's a Bullet Club Beach party mm -hmm. down in Tampa. And Ross, if you guys are down there, you guys are more than invited to come down to the beach party and join us, man. We can't afford more the flights. Invited. If you want to pay for our flights, we'll come down. Yeah. <laughs> oh Jesus! I said you're invited, man. <laughs> you're invited. If you're happy to be down there, man, my pocket's already deep already. I got, I just picked up Ken Shamrock. You know how much that cost me? <laughs> I could imagine it cost a pretty penny. It was worth a try, though. It was worth a try. <laughs> so let's get cracking with the knuckle and let's see what Tamatonga wants to send straight down to hell. So let's find out what Tamatonga's first offering is to go down straight to hell. Ah, uh, first one straight to hell is a long ass 24 hour travel day to Japan, man. Ooh. You can throw that shit straight to hell, bro. <laughs> How often straight are you doing hell. that these days? Uh, let's see. I just, I just got back two days ago from Japan. That was a 24 hour travel day. And then I leave tomorrow back to Japan and that's another 24 hour travel day. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I was home here for three days. Uh, that's two 24-hour travel days, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna go back to Japan for one week, and then I come right back. That's another. That's a third one. Uh, so this month, this month, uh, I'm doing that about four times this month. So break yeah. down, break down that day. Like, what time does it start? And like, like each segment of the day, how does it go? Oh, shit. all right. So I like okay. So I explain what how two days ago. I woke up at five in the morning. Got picked up at six in the morning. Went to the airport. My flight from Osaka to to uh, Tokyo was from like eight, and I got there at nine thirty in the morning. And then I waited from nine thirty in the morning in Tokyo till four thirty to board my plane to uh, to Atlanta. So that was a thirteen hour flight from tokyo to <laughs> atlanta and then atlanta i waited in atlanta four hours till i caught my flight finally home and i got home at nine at night that was uh, absolutely brutal bro holy sh and i've been doing this for 10 10 years here in japan i was gonna say you can do it you can throw that sh to hell man <laughs> <laughs> you never thought of getting a more like permanent residence in japan we, you know, I thought about it. I, I, I spoke to my wife about it, and that was uh, that was probably the plan about uh, three years ago, three years ago. And um, but then uh, we ended up uh, having our son, and now on our uh, second child, on our daughter coming in a couple months. So that just kind of like, no, we got to stay close to home here with her family, so they can help her with the kids while I'm on the road. I've always wondered, how do you find being sort of like, you know, a Westerner in Japan? How do you find the sort of life when you're over there? Is it quite hard to fit in or is it just like easy? Ah, uh, you know, they're, they're so, it's easy because they're so, uh, it's, they're so polite and so easy that, uh, Richard will tell you, I mean, the, the, everything is, is, it's nice, it's clean, as they have a way, certain way of doing things and that's easy for me to follow. Uh, they're, they're very good with foreigners. I, I love it. I love it. That's that's my, one of my main reasons of staying in New Japan. This this my whole career so far is um, is because it's easy. It's very easy for me and and very uh, I guess I, I love it. There you go. I was gonna say Richard, our editor is actually gonna go over there for a whole year. He got any tips? Oh sh. Yeah, he's moving. Yeah. He's leaving us here. He's going over there. <laughs> oh shoot, go Richard, man. Hey, that's good, man. One year. Ah, right. shoot. Uh, if I didn't tell you tips in, in the first time I seen you, Richard, you, you'll be fine, man. <laughs> <laughs> Fair but, uh, yeah, God, I can't imagine what that would be like. Is that, is, how do you sort of make it easier, the sort of daunting prospect that is a 24-hour day? Like, what do you do to sort of make it a bit more palatable? Uh, so, you know, I have a little routine. There's a, there's a sushi spot in the, in the, in the, um, 
at the airport in Tokyo that uh, Carl Anderson and uh, Giant Bernard, or he ended up being Tenzai yeah. in, in WWE, they, they kind of like passed on the ritual to me as, as they left, you know? Um, and that's, I get there, I gotta go, I gotta go sit down at the sushi spot. I sit there, have my eat. I'll go up to the Delta Lounge, you know, have a little few brewskis maybe, <laughs> you know, that just kind of warm me up for the flight. And uh, I mean, that's pretty much it, you know? <laughs> That's pretty much it. And once you get on the plane, you, you're trying to sleep the whole time. You know, yeah. just to make the time go faster. Well, there we have it. Flights, 24-hour days have gone to hell. That's where they probably belong. 24-hour flight days have gone to hell. Tama, what's next up, please? All right. Uh, shoot. Cut. You know, during our tours, man, we make these stops. where We make our rounds all over Japan. We, we make these stops as, like, convenient foods. It's, you know, like truck stops, you know. And they're just the worst foods, man. <laughs> I, 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 I wish they had like. I, have you been to America? Oh yeah, a couple uh, of times, yeah. Yeah, you know we. I, I'm used to like fast foods and like more, more. I, I guess I've had enough of those, those, those convenient store foods like noodles and and rice. <laughs> and I can't. I can't I, those are the the truck food stops that that we stop at and and fried like uh, I, I I don't even know how to explain it to you because you've got to see it. <laughs> but just imagine a lot of noodles and I, and it, as wrestlers you're trying to watch your figure and noodles and rice is not part of your diet. Yeah. <laughs> you know and you just got sometimes you just drink a protein shake. <laughs> You know, to, to 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 fill yourself during these these times, man. But they're not the best foods in the world, and I say, damn the hell with them, man. Damn the hell. They got like these egg sandwiches. I, I can't take any more egg sandwiches. <laughs> 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 these little ham sandwiches. I can't take any more ham sandwiches, man. Oh, yeah. So I, I would say the 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 um the convenient foods that we stuck at the truck stops we we stop at. Do them away, man. We need we need better better stuff. Give me a give me something better than that. Something, please. <laughs> you need please. what we have over here because we've got a twenty four hour like service station thing called Weatherby Services, which I've been to a few times. And we have Marks and Spencers there. You ever been to Marks and Spencers? No. Oh, it's I'm very it's del very posh, very delightful. You get all sorts of top notch food there. I'm not even being oh. sarcastic either. It's lovely. <laughs> you need to take Marks and Spencers to Japan. <laughs> oh shoot! I would, I would imagine he has some fish and chips. I can do some fish and chips. <laughs> <laughs> Not if you want to watch your figure. <laughs> but I was watching. Um, Seamus is a guy who I follow on social media, and he's big about sort of ma meal prep on the road. How, how, what, how are you with that sort of thing? That's, that's the actually the idea that I have in my mind is I, I wish these we would have a meal prep. You know, I mean. You think, you think the company would think, you know, all right, maybe, you you know, to get these guys in shape, maybe we, we prep them. I know it's really up to the wrestlers to do it, but that would be kind of cool. If maybe the, the company builds like a meal prep company and then the boys can chip in something and then, you know, it'll pay for the for the, the travel foods. You know, now, now, you know, now the business, they they have a business within a business and they're, keep, they're they're setting up their guys for a uh, body success, would you say? Yeah. It doesn't yeah. look like the most practical thing though, because he shows this bag and it's like I can't yeah. imagine now like putting that on a plane and then putting that on a coach or something like that and then just like hooping it around the world. I can't imagine that being very. Uh, well, see, luckily in Japan we go through we have a we have a, a tour bus, yeah. so you know you just put that in you know on the bus because we're just traveling. Usually the you know those travel buses the longest we'll go is maybe eight ten hours, but within those stops you know at least we'll have something prepped that that day you know so do you find a microwave would... and you sort it yeah yeah <laughs> for sure for so sure how sure, do you... put, a, put a microwave inside our bus too why go. not get all these wheels in motion man get it sorted <laughs> <laughs> right so how does how does like sort of america compared to japan in this respect is, is america a lot worse than japan is or is it just sort of the same on 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 tra on our travel on our tours on sort of like the the food late at night Sort of the options and then what you get there when you get there and stuff like that. Uh, oh, it, you know, I just couldn't, uh, because I've never done a tour, an actual tour here in America, like try, do the loop that we do in, in Japan, I can't tell you, you know. Um, but I, I, I know enough that, you know, you can always find uh, uh, something here in America. Like we just, okay, so we just did uh, 
a loop here in, in, in America. We went from Tampa to Nashville to it's the first the Southeast. We just did it a couple weeks ago. And but the thing was, we didn't take a bus. We just we flew to spots. So our hotels had like these convenient places around, you know, and so it was it was easy to find something. And, you know, Google Maps was was a godsend, you know, mm -hmm. so I could find food, whatever. Uh, especially, help, you know, trying to watch my, my diet. But um, so I, I guess in that in that aspect, I would think here in America is better. But, I, you know, it's kind of like it's, I don't know Japan like I know America, yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah, so much just eating the same stuff in Japan that really gets you. Right. I can yeah. understand that. Need yeah. variety spice of life in it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. There we have it. The, the, the stuff you get late at night in Japan that got straight to hell. So tell me your third offering, please. All right. Uh, going into wrestling, um, this one, I, you know, I just think it's funny. And I, I kind of think do away with it, whatever. <laughs> but kick pads. I <laughs> have. Um, uh, <laughs> I, I think that's the funniest thing to have kick pads on, um, especially when you don't kick. <laughs> you know, <so. laughs> but they look really cool, though. <laughs> <laughs> Do they look cool? Because I don't think they look cool. <laughs> I'm just a clownish. <laughs> and I, you know what? And I, and I'm saying this with love because what you know, one of our the best guys that I know wears them. You know, and and it's fine. Uh, AJ Styles wears. Kick pads. So maybe he's the only one that's allowed to wear kick pads. And it's, and it, it, he does some great kicks and cool stuff. But everybody else, man, I I, I don't know. Kick pads to me is just uh, it's just funny. I I <laughs> I'm, I'm I, I feel like when I when I see somebody wearing kick pads, they're trying to they're trying to hide their skinny legs, you know, because they don't work them out. <laughs> it's just the, the sort of as you can probably tell, I'm not much of a fighter. But to me, if I was wearing like. Why would you wear kick pads when your shin bone really, really hurts? Yeah. Surely your shin bone hurting, like just making contact directly with someone would hurt a right. lot more with a kick pad. Right. What's the you know, I, Do you know I, the I, science behind it? <laughs> <laughs> I, I just, I thought the kick pads was for training, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, that, it, I, I just know, uh, you know, but it's pro wrestling, I guess, you know? <laughs> you can wear the hell. What the hell do you want? I mean, I wear a chest vest. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, but that looks really cool as well. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you know, but but I ain't trying to kick somebody with my chest. You know? <laughs> Start doing the old belly bounce. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll tell you what, it helps me out when I'm getting chopped, though. Because <laughs> yeah. it gives me a nice padding. <laughs> so through, through your career, like what, in terms of footwear, have you had sort of a, a, an evolution through footwear, to, like the, the stuff you find more comfortable today, or has it been the same all the way? Through. Oh yeah, no, I've, I've evolved. I, you know, when I first got into uh, New Japan, um, I had like almost like a Jimmy Jimmy Snuka style gimmick, and and I wore barefoot like my pop Jimmy Snuka like old Polynesian style. So I went barefoot, and now that that was uh, for me the easiest because it was very uh, mobile, it was very uh, fast, quick, everything. the The problem with that was that during winter it would get so cold as i'm walking to the damn arena to the damn ring my feet will go numb from the concrete by the time so i would take a bottle of hot water and put it in my in my on the apron on, the, on my corner and stand on it yeah. to warm my feet <laughs> <laughs> that, so that you know that's the part about being barefoot and then i went to boots right after that i went to uh after i uh, did my time i did well, I went to Boots in 2012 for a few years, and then after Boots, I've, I'm now with like uh, what I found easier, m more mobile than Boots is uh, boxing shoes. You know, and I found these these great boxing shoes that that, that have been I've been riding with that ever since. What's this like so, sort of fundamental difference between Boots and then boxing boots, and then sort of you know other type of footwear? Like why does it, I just wonder why certain people choose traditional boots and then some choose different sort of stuff um is I think the, the, yeah the, so, some is for the image you know the and some is to get them you know wear boots with like these high inches of platform so they could be taller yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know i could give too damn about that but uh so i i'm more for uh i i'm going more for uh what, what am i looking here for um 
for uh, performance. Yeah. You know, so I, I the 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 boxing shoes I'm able to move and pivot and and run and I have, I'm lighter on my feet. I can feel the the canvas. I can feel the rope when I'm standing on it, and I and it's just better for me. I'm more for performance, and it's kept my, you know, it's easier to put on. It's faster to take off. It's just a lot better all around for myself. And is there any sort of snow that would get you to wear some kick pads? Hell no. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> Maybe I'll wear some ca my, some calves pads to make my calves look bigger. <laughs> <laughs> I think Rick Flair might have wanted them back in the day. That's why he used to use knee pads, no, wasn't it? To hide his little calves. <laughs> there we have it. Kick pads have gone straight down to hell. Right then, so here we go with pick number four. Tell me what, you, what you're sending down. All right, number four, uh, hot oil. You ever seen those hot oil that people put on the, to, and it flushes you and it makes like build bodybuilders, you know, it Just makes them like. Veins. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, I can't stand that. We could do away with hot oil, man. That, that stuff, when you put that on, whoever puts it on and, and you're working with them in the ring, that flies everywhere, especially when they put you in the headlock because your face is right there, rubs off in your face, gets in your eye, burns your head. It, it, it's just not the worst is in your eye. That's that's the worst. Now now we can't perform. That's I, that's just obvious. You you gotta get rid of that. I guess it's time to name and shame the serial offenders. Who does it? Who keeps doing it? Uh, <laughs> I, hey man, you can't put me out on blast like that. I ain't no snitch, man. Come on now. <laughs> I'm gonna try. <laughs> hey, hey, you know, I, I'll just put it like this. Mexican wrestlers love that stuff. <laughs> Fair enough. The entire nation of Mexico. <laughs> um, okay. Do people still do it today? Even though yes. they know what it does to people? Oh, yes, they do. They do. I can smell it in a locker room. <laughs> and what's the, what's the smell? What sort of smell we're talking to you? Uh, it, it has like this cinnamon, uh, cinnamon like fire smell. You can smell it. It's it's obvious. You know what it is when you've been burned by it. <laughs> <laughs> like a skunk. <laughs> and I guess if you've ever had to approach somebody to say, just be like, say, you know, you're going to have a match against somebody. You've had to, you've seen them put it on in a locker room. Have you ever had to approach yeah. them and say, could you, would you mind washing that off? What sort of response do you get? Uh, I, I'd rather, I'd be like, hey man, we gotta, we gotta switch. You gotta work with somebody else, bro. I don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the sort of thing, you know, when somebody's using it, there's just, there's no way to have them not use it. It's just gonna, you just gotta grin and bear it. Out of respect, you know, if you, if they're older than, you know, the elder out of rank, I just gotta eat it, you know? But if I got rank with somebody, hey man, you gotta take that shit off, bro. Have you ever been tempted to use it yourself when you've been facing someone you don't, you know, you're not too keen on somebody? You ever been tempted just to throw it on just to to, to hamper their vision? No, man, I'm <laughs> not like that. <laughs> no, no, no. Maybe oh, for no, the Enzo man. match. <laughs> yeah, but for the Enzo, I'll just take the whole bottle and squirt it in his eye. <laughs> you know. <laughs> That's fair. I can't imagine any, there being anything worse than your vision being impaired in, in a wrestling match. Is that is that so sort of the worst? A heel, man, that's a heel move right there. Yeah. You know. Is that the yeah. sort of the worst sort of superficial? Because obviously, get the the, the 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 proper injuries. Is that is that the sort of the worst superficial injury if you like to have sort of some effect <laughs> yeah. in your eyes? You know, yeah, you know, it it works. It works. <laughs> there we have it. That wait, what was it called again? Hot oil. Hot oil. Hot oil has gone down to hell. So what's next up, Tamer? What do you want to send down to hell? I right. jet lag. <laughs> Jet lag, man. I I think that's that's the one. I think just to like tie in with the travel, after being in Japan uh, for a while and coming back here, it, it takes me about a week to get back on schedule because I think that's the worst because your mind is going crazy. You're everybody's awake. You're sleeping. When they're sleeping, you're awake. Going to the gym at odd hours, two three in the morning. That's that's the worst. 5 p.m. you're starting to get groggy, you know, if you don't have the, if you're not asleep by then. It's it's the worst, man. Yeah. Jet lag is the worst. I've always wondered that about wrestlers, what they do, to, say if you got like a tour and you've got so many shows day after day after day and you've flown yeah. a long way and then the jet lag yeah. kicks in, how do you sort of cope with that? Like, is there anything you can do or not? No, I, you know, the good thing is that they will put to work right away. So, you, you're like moving and, and you're like awake with everybody you, you know you're tired but you just you push through it 
the difference is being at home is that you don't have to work. So you there's nothing like like hey you got to do this no you just kind of like on your own and and you fall asleep when you fall asleep there's no uh you know will to like okay this has to be done so you got to stay awake and when you're home you're free just you know and there's no there's no work <laughs> no that's that's the hard part that's the hard part so what, what do you like with sleep in general because i guess it, it would help if you could just survive on three hours sleep every night just as a norm oh hell no man i can't i, I gotta get my sleep <laughs> I, I I gotta get my sleep now. It's more important now than ever. And you know, I got I got a son that doesn't sleep, and when he's up, I gotta be up too. So that I, my my sleep has become more more important than ever in my life now. I gotta get my sleep, man. Gotta get my sleep. That's just the thing that baffles me with wrestlers. Like they can do these amazing, death-defying, like amazing athletic things on zero hours sleep. I'll be like, if that was me. I mean, I'm not athletic anyway, but like if that was me, I would just be like sort of falling on my ass in the ring and that would be it. I'd just be, I'd have no career. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess it's years of training, huh? Oh. <laughs> That's that, years of training. I might come yeah. in to have this. You, you go in automatic mode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know what else to say. I, can, I guess this is tied into the first point as well. <laughs> About the uh, 24 hour days travel. But yeah, there we go. Jet lag. What else do you say there? It's got to go to hell, hasn't it? Tama, we might as well do it straight away. What is your last offering? Hey, my, my last one is, is just a little, it's just like the kick pads. Uh, you know, you know, in a ring when you see like Mexican style and you see like a passerby, when a guy runs at him, he just get, moves out of the way and yeah. <laughs> I hate that. <laughs> <laughs> in wrestler, in wrestler speak, what is the sort of logical storyline explanation for that thing where a wrestler goes like that and just lets you the guy run past them? What is what's that? I I, I think that <laughs> I know it's wrestling, but I fucking hate that. <laughs> <laughs> so you haven't got an explanation yeah. for us? No, man, no. Can anybody explain that? Just tell me, make that. Can somebody make that? logical to me because you you're running at me and i'm watching you and you just move out of the way and go like this to me i i hate that <laughs> i'm trying to think of to create more momentum so you know you run the the ropes one more time and gather a bit more speed and then when it's, they hit you that's a, a more devastating impact running, it's the person running so fast <laughs> that, that you just whoa I, I can't i can't man i just can't not no you're not doing that to me. <laughs> so when I'm people... definitely not doing it to you. <laughs> I'm gonna guess people have tried in the past to do it to you. What what happens there? You you won't ever see it. You won't ever find a match. You see me just run by them. <laughs> <laughs> you better be a drop down or a leapfrog or something. <laughs> but you're not just gonna turn and swipe me on by. What about no. if it was rolls reversed? I'm guessing someone must have tried it on you though. Oh oh no. I just clobber them instead. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I call it audible. <laughs> I'll tell you what, as we find ourselves here at the last point, I'm really shocked you haven't tried to send Enzo down. You know what? Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, um, I don't even know. I don't even know what to say about that kid anymore. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I, he just, he just, I just saw a promo. He just shot at me, and I think it's cute. I think it's real cute. I, I, and I, I don't know, <laughs> Ross. I don't even know what to say about it anymore. <laughs> Fair enough. I'll move on. But is the, is the, what do you call it? Sorry, the run by, the fly by. What was it called? I, I, yeah, the passerby. Passerby. <laughs> is it? Is it yeah. the thing that's taught in wrestling school? I'll take it. It's not. Not, it wasn't taught to me, <laughs> I, I, unless I skipped, you know, class that day, <laughs> you know, but uh, yeah. Do you have any idea where it came from? Mexico, probably, right. <laughs> probably, I'm, I'm guessing. Yeah, I guess in terms of like a lot of things that happen in, in the duration of a match, it is a bit of like the more perplexing ones, like why does it happen? Yeah. <laughs> and I guess it's got to go down to hell. We'll send it down to hell, why the hell not? Send it, man, send it. So there we have it. <laughs> All your five or six, depending on how many makes the cut. They've all gone to hell. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us today. Apart from obviously the beach party, anything else to plug before you go? No, oh, hey, thank you for having me. Beach party, April 4th, Tampa. Please join us. Come join us, man. If you're down in Tampa, please. You're more than welcome. And where can we My find guest. you on social media? All right. Hey, social media, Tama Tonga. 
the good bad guy Tom Tong on Instagram. Um, that's that's it. So is it Instagram strong style as well as Twitter strong style? Uh no. Since everything's strong style these days. <laughs> no, my only Twitter is a Twitter strong style. Instagram is just uh, my life as a as a as a wrestler. <laughs> That's fair enough. I'll let you get back to you soon anyway, Tamer. Thank you very much for joining us and just yeah, thanks again. Thank you, Ross. Cheers. Thank you for Thank having you. me, man. Thanks for watching. Let us know what you think in the comments below. You can follow us on Twitter at Cultaholic. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Cultaholic. And if you enjoy what we do here at Cultaholic, you can play us to our Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash Cultaholic. Hit subscribe and join us.